Hi everybody and welcome back to the FPL Family YouTube channel. I'm back with my top points picks for game week three. So remember, these are the three players, a defender, a midfielder and a forward who I think will score the most points this game week. Now, game week three is actually really difficult to call and I think that there might be a number of differential picks out there who end up doing really well. But when you look at the underlying stats for the week... It looks a bit of a challenge to pick out who might be the top point scorer. Now, I've already had Newcastle's Willock as my jammy pick for the week, and I do think that he is going to have a good game week, as do I think that Deli Ali will have a good one too. But I've tried to be a bit more sensible and to think about who I think has got the best fixtures when it comes to picking these top points picks. So let's start, as always, with the defender. So this week, I am going to go up to Manchester. And I'm going to pick Ruben Diaz as my defender for the top point scorer this week. Now, obviously, Manchester City have what on paper looks to be a bit of a difficult fixture against Arsenal. However, Arsenal have so many issues right now in terms of COVID that has wreaked havoc with their camp. And they've missed out on a good start to the season because they just haven't been able to keep their squad together. And that will have an impact on them going into this fixture against Manchester City. I can't see them scoring past this Manchester City back line. And we've seen from Ruben Diaz in the past that he does have some attacking threat. We did see goals from him last season. Now, his goal scoring potential isn't as great as the likes of Cancelo or we saw from John Stones last season. However, he does have security of starts and that's something that's really important when you're picking a top points pick. If you're going with a Manchester City player, you need to be fairly sure that they're going to start because if they don't, the chances of them being the highest scoring player in a position that week doesn't look great. Um, Arsenal are vulnerable at the moment defensively, obviously going to also be without Ben White again following his COVID diagnosis and the Arsenal defence were they were all at sea against Chelsea in game week two. If they play like that against Manchester City in game week three, there will be another gluttony of goals for Manchester City. Ruben Diaz is often up there for set pieces, and so that could be an opportunity for him to upscale his points. I'm expecting at least six from him, but I do think there is potential in this game whilst Arsenal are still lacking so many of their players for Manchester City assets to really focus in and to really kind of beat them by a relatively high score. Ruben Diaz, obviously, plenty of assist potential too. And we saw that last time around in, in the 2021 season. Moving into midfield then. Now, I found this one a really difficult pick because obviously normally you'd look to the likes of Salah and Bruno Fernandes to be your top point scoring picks across the game week. But Salah has a very difficult fixture against a Chelsea side that have started the season incredibly well. And Bruno Fernandes had an off game in game week two. Wasn't the Bruno Fernandes that we were all necessarily anticipating that he would be and has a tricky fixture against Wolves who did perform well against Spurs and won't necessarily just roll over in the way that kind of you might hope if you are invested in Bruno Fernandes. So I'm following my heart a little bit with this one and I'm plumping for the South Korean wonder kid that is Sunny. Now obviously Spurs have a nice looking fixture against Watford on paper with the bolstering news from Harry Kane this week that he will be staying with Spurs, obviously, this summer. Doesn't really specify how long for, but this summer, staying at Spurs. And that will have a really positive impact on the rest of the club. We saw that in the conference trophy interviews that happened today when they were talking to players like Gallini and, of course, Nuno. Real smiles, real sense of happiness across that Spurs team. And we've also seen that during training this week when they were presenting Hugo Lloris with his 300 game shirt. So I think what's happened with Harry Kane in the last week will be positive for what's happening at Spurs. Now there is a little bit of rhetoric about Sonny's hamstring. I really don't think it's an issue. I've seen videos of him running in training. I've seen plenty of pictures on the Spurs social media of him taking part in training and nothing was mentioned about him in the conference, uh, press conferences today um, that we saw from Nuno and the Spurs team. So I'm suspecting Sonny to start against Watford, potentially back alongside 
teammate Harry Kane. We'll see whether he starts. Now, of course, Spurs do have to play the conference game on Thursday evening, which they will need to win if they want to take part in the conference for next season. So that is something to just be a little bit wary of. And this one maybe is slightly more risky on that basis. But I am not expecting Sonny to take part in that match unless it's absolutely necessary for him to do so might we see Kane in that game though I think we might just in terms of match fitness and getting him back up to speed and ready for the weekend's activities Spurs' record against Watford is really positive and I do suspect that in front of a very excitable Tottenham crowd on the back of what happened with Harry Kane earlier on this week we will see something really special from that Spurs team and if we do I think Sonny will be a massively part of it. So I think he will be our top point scoring midfielder this week. Now, when we go to the attacking position, there's one standout player that I do think I've kind of overlooked here a little bit because Antonio has been phenomenal since this season started. His relationship with Ben Rama has just been fantastic. It's like they've always played together. Ben Rama has filled that Lingard void so well to the point where you don't even really notice that Lingard is missing and obviously what they did against Leicester City on Monday evening was incredible and obviously I think he will probably have another really good game in game week three against Crystal Palace. However, this one's a little bit out there because he in, in return, had a terrible game on Monday evening. But I'm going to go this week with Leicester's Jamie Vardy. Now, not a player that's in, that popular in terms of the game, not a player that is on the radars of a lot of managers because suddenly everyone's trying to work out how they bring Lukaku and Kane into their team. But Jamie Vardy this week will be playing against Norwich. Norwich have conceded three goals against Liverpool so far, followed by five goals against Manchester City. Now, of course, Leicester will be without Perez following his red card in the game on Monday evening. But sometimes actually those changes might just be the thing that is needed to see Jamie Vardy playing maybe back alongside Ian Acho. Could he come in and take the place that Perez has vacated? And if that happens, that probably improves Jamie Vardy as a prospect because we saw last season when they were playing together actually there was a real improvement in what Vardy was returning. Now this game against Norwich City of course they're going to be wanting to bounce back from what happened on Monday evening. The Monday evening result against West Ham will have been a real disappointment to the Leicester City fans but also to the players themselves. I think there's real potential here that the Leicester City players really go to town in this game, work hard and can get some returns against Norwich. Norwich they're not necessarily expecting to pick up points in these opening three fixtures. This will be the one that, if anything, they think they can get something from. So I'm suspecting that they might be a little bit more attacking in this game than they were against the likes of Liverpool and against Manchester City in game week three. And if they do that, they will leave space and that space can easily be exploited by the likes of Vardy. Of course, Vardy also has penalties in his locker and that adds to his appeal too. So those are my three top points picks for the week, although Vardy and Son could very easily have been other players too, particularly Antonio. He is the one that is in the back of my mind. He could be the top points pick, but I just think the fixture favours Vardy ever so slightly because I do think Norwich will try and attack and pick up their first points of the season. And in doing that, they might just give this man the space that he needs to return good points for his managers. So in defence this week, it's Ruben Diaz from Manchester City playing against Arsenal in game week three. Um, in midfield, it's Sonny playing for Spurs, obviously, against Watford in game week three. And then Leicester's Jamie Vardy playing against Norwich in game week three. Those three are the players that I think will be the top points picks for game week three. Drop me a note in the comments below to let me know who you think will be the top points scorer in game week three in each of these positions if you haven't already done so please hit the like button um, before you go and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button see you next week guys